Hi, I'm Gemma. I go to Lancaster Girls Grammar School and I study A-levels in Psychology, Geography and Business. And I'm here to interview Dickie today. I'm Dickie Siddle. I was born in the middle of Morecambe, actually in the middle of Arndale Centre, what is now. I had to lip all the old cottages down and then I moved to Scholar Green Lane and then my mother bought a boarding house and that's how we started. Yeah. Um, where was the property located? Uh, well, my mum and dad bought a uh, boarding house on a uh, seven bedroom boarding house on Thornton Grove. I lost, I lost my father who had no. a coal business. So she sold the coal business and she invested it into St. Winifred to tell on the promenade. Oh, yeah. And uh, we, we moved in there for, for about 10 or 12 years. There from about mid 50s to 70s. The whole, the whole block of hotels from the Broadway were all built by Mrs. Bourne in Blackpool and they were identical to the ones in Blackpool the hotel. There was no en-suites or nothing in them when, when we moved in. All the hotels at the time were putting bars in because you were getting a licence. My mother was the only one on that block that wouldn't have a, a, a licence. She didn't want them. And the amount of people who used to say to my mother, Agnes, are you getting a bar fitted for next year? She said, no, right, can we book? Because they could go anywhere for a drink and come back to the hotel, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and go to bed, nobody banging about in the middle of the night. And she was always full. What type of landlady was she, character, personality-wise? Uh, she was right down to earth, straight as a die, always jovial and everything. The regular customers used to come every year same time, every, especially the Scotch, Paisley weekend, she'd be around making sure that staff were working, doing their jobs properly. And yeah, she was sound, she was sound. Mm. She was Irish. Well, you won't think she was Irish because she was only a baby when she came over, basically. Mm. And uh, lived in Bolton for about uh, 18 years. And then they were going back to Ireland. They sailed from Isham to Ireland and they wouldn't let them disembark because there were riots going on. So she came back to Morecambe and said, I'm not going back to bloody Bolton, I'm stopping here. So what was the reason she became a landlady? What inspired her? My dad's sister, uh, she bought a hotel on Western Road and uh, they'd had it a few years and they bought the one next door. They knocked them both together. It was called the Romney. But my auntie, they had the hotel for a long, long while. So what sort of staff did she have? Raymond, and he was a fantastic bloke. And he just did his job. He was clean, he was smart. It was always everything was laid out properly. He was a, he was a gentleman. He worked for my mother for about ten years, twelve years. She had a, an old ear in the kitchen. Yeah, she would have loved. She would have loved. Do anything, peel potatoes, in laundry. If one of the staff wasn't well, she'd do chambermaiding. They all mucked in together. It was a great life, but she was into everything. Twenty-five eggs in one pan. A little mm -hmm. round things, bang, 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 bang. Oh, there was a guard, it must have been two to three foot across, rope on it, and a, and a big triangular piece of timber. And my mother used to bang it for breakfast and for dinner when meals were ready. Bong, 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 bong. It was like a stampede into the bloody dining room. <laughs> it was homely, it was just like being home, you could go in the house, and my mates used to come in and you want a sandwich? Yeah, help yourself, help yourself. It was. So where did the guests come from? Was the one certain place where they travelled in? Most of them, a lot came from a place called Bradford, spelled with a T in Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> and Scotch Paisley, a lot from Paisley around that area. And Scotch Weekend, you couldn't move in Morecambe for Scotch people. There were just hundreds and hundreds. There was a couple from uh, Paisley. She used, to, she used to dog him so... Or, you behave yourself. No swearing neither. He couldn't understand hardly a word he said. He was no. like broad scotch. <laughs> there was one fella who used to get, go out and have a good skinful. My mother said, no coming in drunk tonight. What he did do, it didn't make any difference. No. <laughs> he didn't want them falling all over the place and making a mess. But they, they never did really. You know, it was, they just went out and had a few drinks and come back and get up for the next day because there was always something to do in Morecambe, not like now. Wrestling on and dancing, four or five dance floors in Morecambe, uh, Prisium Bar, Fairground was going, kids were going, Bass, Beauty Queens. During the close season, did your mum get a chance to go out? It used to be up until about 
end of September, beginning of October, and they used to go to Florida for a month or two months and then come back and then start getting ready, decorating and getting everything ready for the next season. One winter, she, she never went abroad and there was about 20 to 30 people booked in the hotel. They were mainly men from Norway, Holland, Germany, Switzerland and they come to put a barrage across the bay or to plan for a barrage across the bay. And what was the dining room was stripped out and there was a big table there. It was going out in the bay, surveying the bay. So you mentioned there was a lot to do in Morecambe at the time. Was there any entertainments within the hotel? We had a piano in, in the lounge and it's, we had some, oh we had one bloke, he couldn't half play, oof. And he had them all going. She said they had like a bloody choir in, in the front room, in the lounge. And next thing you know they'd gone to the pub and come back having a sing song. <laughs> From what I think, my mother enjoyed everything she did. 